Hello and welcome back to my Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. Now the Triangulum Galaxy is one of our local group of galaxies and is located within that small constellation of Triangulum, which is between Aries and Andromeda. Now it is quite close to the ecliptic, so it's not circumpolar, but it is really well placed throughout winter. So you have it in the south to southwest in through December and January, so you get some really long nights on it. So let's take a look and see how to track this one down. So to locate the Triangulum Galaxy, there's two ways you can do it. You can use the small constellation of Triangulum or you can come from Andromeda. So when you're using Triangulum, if you've good enough seeing to pick up those faint stars, you just want to find that very end star on the point of the triangle. That's Alpha Triangle. It's magnitude 3.4. And then if you move, say, west-northwest from that about 4 degrees, you should pick it up there. It's just in the direction of a uh, Sigma Piscium. Uh, then the other way of doing it is if you use um, Andromeda, so find your um, Alpha Rats, your Alpha Star of Andromeda, and then Merak, the basis star, go along that line that you would to find the galaxy Andromeda. But then instead of going to Andromeda, you want to go the exact uh, distance in the other direction from uh, Mirac or Beta Andromeda. It's just about seven degrees or so, and it's just on the mirror side of it, and you'll pick it up in your finder or your binoculars. So M33 is a wonderful large spiral galaxy with that pinwheel shape where the arms are coming out from the center bar and bending back around itself. It's quite small compared to say the Andromeda galaxy. It has a diameter of 54 million light years and it's at a distance of 2.7 million light years from us. But it is quite close to the Andromeda galaxy within that local group at only 750 million light years away. So you can imagine how large it is in the sky if you were in that galaxy. Now, it was discovered in 1654 by Giovanni Battista Hodierna, but then it was again independently rediscovered by Messier when he was uh, charting his catalogue and became Messier 33. In turn, William Herschel then was able to discover NGC 604 when he was observing it and find that star cloud within it that's uh, just a fascinating feature. And there's a few other ones within it, but that being the brightest. M33 is part of that local group of galaxies alongside the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy being the larger members and it is quite close it's 2.7 million light years from us so it's equivalent to the distance the Andromeda Galaxy is away so you're kind of looking at the two of them in that aspect on the night sky but these two galaxies in real terms are only 750 million light years away which is 14 degrees on our night sky. So you can just picture that large triangle that the three galaxies are making up. Now there's other galaxies as well that orbit Andromeda that we can observe from here, but I'm going to go into those in more detail in my next videos about Andromeda and its satellite galaxies. So M33 is a wonderful large pinwheel style galaxy with those two large arms kind of coming out from the east and west side and curving around itself but it's kind of let down by its proximity to us because it's just so large on the night sky it gets very diffuse and all that light is really spread out so it takes up with my thousand millimeter telescope it takes up the whole sensor you can i can just fit it inside the sensor compared to say uh, m51 which is just a small little galaxy in the center of the frame but it's still a fabulous galaxy to observe because there's so many little details within the arm structure of it and you can pick them up with a little bit of magnification. So of these NGC uh, regions within the Triangulum Galaxy, NGC 604 would be the most famous and the most well known. Now this is um, a H2 region similar to the Orion Nebula, but it is 50 times larger. So it's an absolute monster of a star cloud uh, within the galaxy of Triangulum. And we can observe it from here and pick it up in our images, which is just amazing. It has a diameter of 1500 light years. So that's the equivalent of Earth to the Dumbbell Nebula, just for the diameter of the star cloud. So you could imagine how big the Orion Nebula would be if it was 50 times larger in our sky. So this is just such an impressive structure, but we see it as such a small element of our images or in our eyepiece, but it's just so fascinating to observe. So M33 has some globular clusters as well. They're all quite faint, but the brightest of them is globular cluster C39 at magnitude 15.9. Now this is outside of my reach with my 12 inch telescope, but if you have a larger aperture, you may be able to observe this visually. 
but I was able to get it in my long exposure, but it is quite stellar. So the location of it, I'll just show you in the photo. It's about 20 arc minutes away from the core of the galaxy. So if you have ran a long exposure photo on M33, you may have picked up C39. Now, um, Andromeda does have an observable a globular cluster called Myal2 and I'll look at that in my next video on Andromeda. So to get my image of M33 I used my GH5 on my 200 PDS and this was run on the NEQ6 mount. Um, I just shot with the GH5 so it's just a colour image that I captured over, I think this was over a couple of nights that I got this photo. Um, I'd love to return to it. I, it's on my list of targets for my H2 filter when I pick it up. So I will be returning to get a better image on this one to run that whole color scheme with the hydrogen scheme on it. Um, I may I may decide to use the 82 ED for it or not. I have to check about the image size because it just fits inside the crop sensor, which gives it lovely detail, but you don't have much room to work with when you're framing it and when you're stacking the, the different images. So with the color image, it was fine. But I think if I was running RGB, I might try it on the 82 ED first. Now for observing this target, it's a wonderful target to observe on any size telescope. If you have a little bit of a, uh, aperture, you can really tease out some of those smaller details within the arm structure. But overall, if you, you can go out with your binoculars and observe this quite easily if you have a good sky. If you're not uh, too washed out with light pollution, you can pick it up. But if you get to a dark sky, any size telescope will show this galaxy up um, akin to the way you can observe Andromeda. The only thing letting it down is the fact that it is so spread out and that light is so spread out and faint. But it does hold up well when you're looking for the little areas within the arms when you put some magnification on and you can get that little bit of contrast. It can be a little bit disorientating when you throw so much uh, magnification at it and you're kind of losing where the core is and that. But if you can kind of keep your, keep your positioning on it, you should be able to pick up some of those nice little NGC um, targets within the galaxy. So for my observing sessions on M33, I used my 12 inch Skywatcher Dobsonian and I was mostly using my wide field eyepieces. Um, I found they worked really well with this one because it is quite diffuse. So as much light as you can get into your eye works really well to get that overall structure. It's almost like it has two arms coming out from the east and west and they're kind of pulled right back around the galaxy again. And you can trace them but kind of in mottled clumps rather than a kind of full arm structure. Uh, when you add a little bit of magnification to this one you can start to bring out some more of those kind of star clusters and star clouds within the arms. And some of them, a good few of them actually have, a, have NGC designations. Um, including NGC 604 which is a really lovely star cloud uh, hydrogen 2 region within the galaxy that you can observe with a, quite a modest telescope it's quite a bright little region it looks stellar in a small telescope but you will see it but if you have a bit of aperture you can really kind of pull out kind of the unstellar condition of it but it's a fascinating object to observe in itself because it is similar to the Orion Nebula but just on a massive scale at like 50 times bigger than the Orion Nebula. So you can just imagine what it would look if you were that close to it in the sky. It has a diameter of like 1500 light years. So I spent uh, one full night trying to observe as much as I could from NGC 604. Uh, there's not a lot of detail, it's more an interesting object to observe rather than a detailed object to observe. But it is fascinating for the sheer size of it. Um, the galaxy also has its own globular clusters but they're all um, out of reach of my 12 inch telescope. But if you have larger aperture you might be able to track down C39 which would be the brightest of the globular clusters that are within the galaxy. I am however going to look at uh, Myal 2 which is a globular cluster that is within reach of a 12 inch telescope and that is in orbit around Andromeda. So in my next video on Andromeda Galaxy I will have a look at that one.
All in all, uh, Messier 33 is just one of those fantastic objects that we have available in the night sky. And we're lucky enough here to have it throughout those winter months. So you, you can get like 10, 12 hours observing in on this target alone. And it means that you can get some really good long nights of imaging on it as well. So if you are observing Andromeda, um, this is a really good nearby galaxy to try to compare to it in size and brightness and just the core size as well. And just the different textures to the two galaxies, comparing like that really lovely arm structure and Andromeda to the kind of mottled pinwheel look of the Triangulum Galaxy. For my next videos, I'm going to focus on the Andromeda Galaxy and its satellite galaxies. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to hearing about your imaging and your observations of M33 in the comments below. And until next time, clear skies.